State has a very large renewable energy uh, setup, and I was actually coming into it from the very small hobbyist level just to play with it and explore it and try to see what could be done with it. And we just kept meeting in the middle. Photovoltaic roof in Spain. And these are uh, two set traffic, set traffic lights working in, an, an, in a mine in Spain with uh, solar panels and the electronic here it's inside this behind this uh, this board there's an Arduino also we have a big antenna here a big antenna to uh, send the signal to the other set traffic light so this have been working for several years in Spain yes, it was a pretty uh, nice experience working with Arduino but now we have moved to just a, uh, a more to hobby and uh, playing with toys like right. Raspberry Pi and we have another configuration here more suitable for sewing and demoing so this is what we are going to talk about tomorrow and it should be w working already so let me check <laughs> and to give you a little bit of an idea Jose's uh, configuration here on his roof is 5 kilowatts the configuration that you saw on my slide is about 200 watts so it's a much smaller scale but what's really neat about this type of a system is it scales extremely well from very very small to even utility level it's just a matter of the size and, and making a few adaptations as you get larger or smaller so the concepts are really very fluid up and down the entire spectrum uh, to give you a little bit of an idea what uh, our configuration on the Raspberry Pi and we were running this with uh, the soft float build of Linux uh, the Wheezy uh, Raspbian Wheezy uh, we've actually converted that now to a hard float build and taken the uh, the Java embedded suite uh, 7.0 and we're running that on hard float we've seen slight performance gains by doing that it's nothing to write home about but but on the very small amount of data that we've collected and run benchmarks even that does show some improvements so when you start talking some rather large data sets I'm sure it'll be even greater these are informal benchmarks I mean we're not advocating they be published or anything but they've they've been kind of promising we think so oh um, okay uh, quick overview of the system architecture um, here we have the remote uh, because a lot of times renewable energy especially wind power but even uh, solar panel photovoltaic panels you don't put those in the middle of a crowded area uh, you can uh, but you know for the wind that you need or, or for the massive sizes of, of you know pretty good sized solar array uh, you're going to need to be out a little bit so you have a, a more remote setup which lends itself more to less hands-on maintenance uh, here we have uh, our land client tied to our router and our embedded server which in this case is a Raspberry Pi uh, more details just a little bit drill down into it a little bit more uh, we also, if you come in tomorrow, we have a, um, a another Pi set up with a web camera that uh, transmits uh, shots as we go too. So we, we've, we're giving you kind of the scaled down version now. Please come uh, tomorrow and check it out. Motion sensors, right, uh, for that as well. Okay, here was what we started looking at bringing. Uh, you know, again, trying to shrink this down to make it portable. Uh, 50 watt wind turbine and and all of this by the way all of this is also very easy to start getting involved with it from ter in terms of a, a cost structure because you can get started with very little money so it you can spend a few bucks and start playing and then you can spend a few more bucks and add in another piece and you know I guess eventually it does add up but even for a pretty comprehensive system we didn't wind up spending that much money to put something together that uh, that will do something meaningful so 50 watt wind turbine, uh, 25 watt uh, photovoltaic panel, and a small 12 amp hour battery. You won't power much for very long with that, but again, it's portable. It wasn't quite portable enough, so we took it down a little <laughs> further. The wind turbine collapsed as well. I went with a small uh, photovoltaic panel you can get to, to charge your auto or, or uh, motorcycle battery and keep it topped off. It works just the same, it just doesn't produce as much out, out output. And a small 5 amp hour battery that still didn't past muster with the airlines so I shipped it out ahead of time but uh, very small and again uh, very inexpensive you can find a lot of this on eBay Amazon as well as many many other retailers uh, here's kind of an overview of our sensor bundle components again very inexpensive stuff you've got some Arduinos a little monochrome display which isn't absolutely necessary it's just kinda nice to peek at um, the INA 219 is, is for monitoring voltage and uh, current 
which is kind of handy. We also have a couple different ways to uh, different devices for measuring um, temperature and humidity, a motion sensor, breadboard to tie it together, some jumper wires. And for the communications, on the one side we have the uh, XB stack, if you will, and on the other side are the, the little uh, uh, Nordic Semi um, radios. And those probably, well, they definitely can be uh, integrated directly with the Raspberry Pi. However, it's just so easy to, to plug them into an Arduino. The libraries are all in place and plug the Arduino into the Pi. So um, that's what I did on, on my side of things. And Jose did the, the full stack implementation of the XBs. So it's kind of nice to compare notes on that. A little more information. This is the server um, and, and the, uh, the Pi uh, that actually has the, um, the camera and the motion sensor. Uh, SD cards. We also have a little bit of performance notes at the end. I don't know that we'll get to them today, but we will be uh, talking about performance on Embedded tomorrow because you can get a lot of stuff. You can even get the full Java EE stack to run on a Raspberry Pi, but you're not going to get very good results out of it. So there are a lot of things you can do to optimize for performance and make it good and meaningful and very useful, uh, even though, again, you know, you've seen the numbers, you've seen the, the, the graphs. It's really pitiful in terms of the numbers, but it's very capable in terms of what it can do if you, if you optimize for it. So total bill of materials. Uh, we were we spent under $700, and you know at times we actually uh, repurposed some parts, so we probably spent a few bucks less than that. But it's certainly nothing that's prohibitive to to really go crazy with and have a really nice system to to work through the the details on, all the way start to finish. And again, with extras and with two different ways of doing things factored in, we're still under $700. Oh, just to give you a little bit of background, on the back end we have the uh, Java embedded suite that is undergoing a change in architecture. We don't have all the details. We just know that 7.1 will be significantly different than 7.0. Uh, it's based more on an OSGI model, so uh, some of the things that we're going to be talking about will apply, some won't. However, the, the general mindset with Embedded is that you're constantly learning new lessons anyway, and, and application is a little different on each platform. That'll probably normalize over time, but for now, the concepts still hold. Um, we have on the, the a couple of different front ends, um, we have, um, well, here, I'll let you take it over. Yes. <laughs> You got it up. Excellent. Okay. For na for now, this is a, a client uh, made in JavaFX. Okay. These are very nice custom controls that you can use to display whatever measure you have on your sensors. I have to say this should work also in the Raspberry Pi. You could just uh, take it, open your Raspberry Pi. You, should, you need a monitor because uh, you cannot uh, access a headless. You need a monitor to see it, but it will run nicely on the Raspberry Pi. It's uh, Java 8. I have a, um, a small, uh, an Atrix lap dock that I've connected to it and built it as a laptop. Uh, and I, I almost brought that with me as well, but frankly, I just had so, I, I maxed out my two check bags that Southwest would let me fly, and I maxed out everything I could carry, <laughs> so I left that at home. But uh, you can use a Raspberry Pi for that. I think a couple of you mentioned XBMC. Um, you can use it as a Java, full-fledged Java server. You can use it uh, pretty much any way you want to. It's just a matter of figuring out what you want. And the more you start playing with it, the more you implement, the more you wind up probably you know, buying another one and trying to do something else with it. Uh, I don't talk to a whole lot of people who stay with just one for long because they're, they're kind of mildly addictive. You can do so much with them. Uh, I have a Beagle Bone Black waiting for me at home when I get back, and I heard you mention that as well, uh, because that supposedly has about twice the performance uh, in many cases as, as the Raspberry Pi for 10 bucks more. It also has a massive amount of GPIO, so you can do a lot of things with the Arduino, with the Arduino or with the black beagle bone black that you can with the Arduino that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have as, as many options to do. Um, I think I mentioned before, but just in case I didn't, I want to hit, uh, because with the embedded space, there are a lot of different options. And a lot of times people say, why are you still using an Arduino with some of these things? One, because they have a ton of shields, and shields are the little add-on boards that you can get. There's also a huge amount of, of uh, software written out there, libraries to support those shields. And it's very, you know, it's open source hardware, it's open source software. 
Uh, I also threw out there earlier that it, it absorbs pretty much any, any energy band you can throw at it in terms of voltage, 6 to 20 volts. I think it's rated for 7 to 15, but 6 to 20. So if you stick a 9 volt on there and it goes almost dead, your, at, or your Arduino is still running. It just handles it. It also has a built-in logic leveler, so you can run 5 volt and 3.3 volt uh, add-ons off of it. Uh, and it sips power. I think it's 42 milliamps, milliamp hours. Very, very minimal. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, if I remember right, is about five, seven times that, uh, which isn't significant. But if you're looking at something to, to leave remote and power off of a wind turbine, you know, just drain a slight amount off of that for your other energy production or off of a solar array, it's negligible what it absorbs. So there are a lot of good reasons to mix and match and kind of pick the best, uh, best breed solution. Tolly, this is my blog. You can find it online. And you can find uh, pretty stuff I have been doing over the last past year and playing with many tools like the one I'm going to show you right now, which is a lead motion controller. This is Java FX 3D. This is a model of the Hubble telescope. But what I can do here is rotate this model, this 3D model. That's good. So I'm applying free rotation at a time because the limb motion controller checks your uh, hand and it, see, it sees uh, the, 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 the pitch, the jaw, the roll. So it gives you all these rotations at a time. So you have to perform some calculus with that, get the rotation you have to apply, and you, you're good to go. It also detects, for that I need my both hands, it detects some gestures, for instance, if I make a circle here, start rotating, then it stops, okay. 